All right, so in this video, we're checking out the iFlight Alpha A65 whoop. And this is a uh, 65 millimeter whoop here, over the motor, with HQ 31 millimeter three bladed propellers. We have 0802 motors here. I'll just show you about another sample here. These are the uh, Zing 0802 22,000 kV motors. You know, they have this uh, rounded bell at the top there. Kind of similar to what the Happy Mono motors look like. One millimeter shaft. And then the motors are plugged into an all-in-one flight control board and ESC board. So this one has uh, 1S 5 amp ESCs. So you have uh, 4 and ESC plus uh, F4 flight controllers. It may take a 4 level target. The receiver is separate here. As you can see, it's got an XM Plus receiver and it does come in other receiver versions like Crossfire, FlySky, etc. VTX is also separate as well. And here is what the insides look like. This is what's inside the underneath the canopy there. And this is their board and it's, uh, and I don't think there's a really any kind of a weird, it's like a SX uh, F4 1S 5 amp all in one whoop board. So it doesn't really have an interesting name, but this is what it looks like. It's kind of interesting in terms of its shape here. It does have a lot of cutouts, I guess, to help reduce weight. And you see the fets for the AC there. And then the receiver connections here at the top. You need to have an extra UART, RX2 and TX2 there. And then the video transmitter is on this little shelf these connected via these pins. 25 and 50 milliwatts power switchable video transmitter and the camera is connected to these three pads here so you have uh, video in five volts and ground and i've never used this camera before i've never seen it before but they're saying it's an 800 tv line 150 uh fpv camera it's an analog camera of course and they're just uh is attached or mounted inside this canopy very tough canopy this this plastic is very tough very unlikely to to break and then the camera is just soldered to the video transmitter for power there should be okay and crashes this has had a few crashes and uh the canopy does protect the insides fairly well and it's just screwed in here on the, into the frame on both sides as you can see and the power lead here is a ph2 connector and they're using the ones with the folded pins like the way newbie drone does theirs and but i think um uh, beta fpv uses the bt 2.0 connector and um happy model uses the ph2 connector but with the solid pins so let's take a look at the bottom of this on one board here like so there's no connections here except for the same uh through holes for the receiver connections up top bootloader button and see the MCU there, F411, and plugs, of course, for the motors on the bottom. Pretty basic. And uh, this um, is you know, pretty much identical to the way the other whoops in the same class are designed. So there's nothing really surprising or different here. So if you compare these to, say, the Meteor 65 from BFPV or the Obula 6 from Happy Model, or I think this one here is the, totally forget the name of this one from Newbie Drone, sorry. But I think, you know, in terms of like, what the differences are between these different models from the different vendors, I think you're gonna find various uh, people saying different things online, of course on Facebook and Instagram, you know, everyone's got complaints about all of these companies and everyone has praises for all these companies. And, you know, in terms of the way they fly, um, they're gonna, it's gonna come down to weight and the motor KV and the battery you're using. So obviously differences in the connector are gonna matter as well. They have different cameras, of course, so you may like certain cameras and not others. Um, this one on the iFlight version does seem to overexpose the highlights quite a bit. The overall picture seems to be overexposed. Now, the best picture is really the one from the Nano 3 here. 
on the Mobius 6, but they don't make this camera anymore, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so maybe the, the, the newbie drone here would be my second choice. Um, but anyway, right, let's just look at the weight of all these here, just so you guys know what the differences are. And here's the Meteor, I'm sorry, this is the Alpha A65, it's 24.4 grams. And let's see, I think this one, the Meteor 65 here is probably gonna be, let's come in a second here, 21.9. Let's see here, what this one from Newbie Drone weighs. 22.2, okay, so that's actually a little bit heavier. And then the one from Happy Model, I think is gonna be the least, yeah, 19.9. And by flight is coming in at 24.4, so, you know, I think it kind of boils down to what you're looking for. So the added weight from the iFlight is, is going into a more durable canopy, possibly a little bit, you know, heavier frame. Obviously the uh, separate receiver and VTX compared to say like the lightest here, the Mobula 6. Yeah, you got a very light frame, still pretty durable. Canopy is probably not, not as durable as the one from iFlight and a fully integrated board with the receiver and the video transmitter and the flight controller and the foreign ESC all on a single board. That's where all your weight savings is gonna come. And then you have different flight characteristics because of the less weight. And these motors being 25,000 kV, you're gonna be able to do a more acro type stuff with something like this. The power to weight ratio is better on the Mobile 6 versus the iFlight. But if you're just talking about, you know, doing whoop racing at a you know, whoop track, all four of these are completely capable and it's really going to depend on the pilot as to how well these are going to do. Um, in terms of the factory PID tune, I don't know, I haven't gotten one of these more recently, um, but um, the PID tune on this one comes with um, RPM filter enabled. It's got the latest version of Betaflight, I believe, and they have the ESCs flash with the Jazz Maverick 16.8 firmware, I think it's 40 kilohertz for RPM filters. So you get pretty good flight times. I don't think anyone else is doing RPM filter on their out of the box tunes. You have to do that on your own. So if that's something you're looking for, then obviously you might want to check out the iFlight one because they can have that out of the box. And then the battery I flew it with is this one for Newbie Drone, the Nitro Nectar 300 milliamp hour Nitro Nectar Gold 1S. This one is going to um, Going to perform really well on all of these, except for of course the beta FPV. That's going to require the ones with the PH 2.0 connector, so or the BT 2.0 2.0 connector. But yeah, this is the battery I recommend if you're going to get the iFlight. But yeah, in terms of like the differences, most of you guys that are just starting out aren't going to be able to notice any difference in terms of how these fly. After you get much better at flying, you're probably going to prefer something lighter and higher KV motors. That's what I prefer. Of course, other people have different opinions on that. You know, that's why the Mobile 6 is still my favorite in terms of the accurate performance, the power to weight ratio is the best. But, you know, in terms of just flying around the house and flying whip tracks and doing whip races, all four of these are totally fine. So if you want, if you're gonna be crashing a lot more and you're worried about durability, you know, then you probably wanna go for the heavier frame and go for the iFlight. And this is gonna probably hold up really well in a lot of pretty nasty crashes. Of course, you know, the one from Media FPV now has a much more durable canopy as well. Their frame's pretty durable as well. All of these, again, durability differences are fairly minor. And of course, the probably the least durable is gonna be the Mobula 6 because it's just uh, so minimalistic and so lightweight and all the components are very light. Anyway, so I'm interested in hearing from you guys what you think of these four here. Uh, which company you think is gonna be better for you in terms of your, your supplier for the whoop season that's coming up here, you know, with, and in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, winter is upon us. So uh, the indoor season is starting, um, you know, there's a lot of good choices out there now and probably even more models are gonna be coming out in the next couple months, I think, after the holiday. But um, yeah, interesting to hear what you guys have to say about the different vendors and who your favorite whoop uh, supplier is for the upcoming season. Let me know down in the comments. Here's the flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.
So the uh, props here and the motors and the way they sound, pretty typical of a lot of brushless whoops. These are the Gem Fan 31 millimeter three bladed props. I don't hear anything unusual in the tune. Tune seems fine. It's a little bit of a wind here. I am running the Newbie Drone 300 milliamp hour nitro nectar batteries. Uh, probably the best ones for these type of 1S whoops. Curious how long the flight will be on these 22,000 kV motors. Pretty good power though. Camera seems a little bit overexposed in the highlights. I don't think I've ever seen this camera before. The video reception is not bad. Voltage has been stuck around three and a half, three point six volts all this time. Now I'm dropping about 3.4. So it's still plenty of capacity in this battery. I'm gonna wait till it starts really dropping to like around three or so. Ooh, almost hit that sign. Oh, I think I had a little RX loss there. Oh, uh, the voltage is dropping here. It's time to land. A minute, you guys think? Whoa.